She recently won 12 gold medals in a competition in Brazil, and now she has her championship site set on Notre Dame, as you can see by her sweatshirt. But there's something that makes Carly Kronk unique. Welcome, Carly. Nice to have you here. Hi. Nice to meet you. Glad to be here. You know, I think it's fantastic that the 12 gold medals, that was individual and team medals, right, in swimming? Yes. Now, I said something about you being unique. What makes you unique and, and different in some of the aspects of your competition? Well, I think the one thing that sets me apart from everyone else is that I have a hearing disability. But pretty much other than that, I, I swim like everyone else. And so it's just my hearing disability. How long have you been swimming competitively? Um, I think I started around four or five. So about... 12, 13 years. Ah, so your parents immediately said, oh, this young lady swims like a fish. I think we should encourage this. So your parents had a lot to do with this? Yes, my parents. So um, all of my siblings swam. So it's kind of like a family sport. So my parents put me in it as well. And I mean, yeah, pretty much a family sport. <laughs> now you're you're a great representative for young people who who feel that uh, a disability is going to hold them back from competing or doing anything in their life, and and it can be frustrating. It can be very very d tough on them. How have you dealt with it, and what do you tell other young athletes or young people who are saying I can't do this because of X? Um, there are going to be multiple obstacles in everyone's life. You just have to know that you're your own limit. You're the only person stopping you. Just have great communication with whoever, your coaches, your family. If you have communication, you can do anything. Um, work hard. I work every single day to be where I am at not right now. And so you're your own, um, your own enemy. Just keep going, fight those obstacles. So when you're communicating with your uh, with your coach, you obviously can't wear your your hearing devices in the water. At least not yet. That's coming. I think eventually that will be something that happens. But uh, you are in the water, and and I I understand that that's with for some hearing impaired people, there's a vibrational aspect to how they feel and sense things. Tell me about that. Um. So basically. We can feel the beats of music without our hearing aids. So at like anywhere, if there's music playing, I'll be able to feel the beats and the vibrations of it. Um, like at a swim meet, majority of the time there's music playing and I obviously cannot hear it, but it's very loud. So it's like, I just feel all the music. I feel all the beats. Um, I will say in the water though, I don't feel it as much. Um, one of my memories of vibrations when I was little is I used to lay on my parents' chest. And as you lay on their vocal cords, vocal cords have vibrations. So I could feel the vibrations of their voice and I could make out some of those words. And now when you communicate with your, uh, I've, I've seen you talk to your coach uh, outside the pool and obviously you're not wearing your devices, but but you have an ability to, to communicate. Tell me how you do that. Well, look, we, um, I do have hearing aids. Those only help amplify the sound. So without them, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I lip read 24 seven. I'm lip reading right now. It's just a lot of lip reading. And I've, I've got to say that, that, you know, you are a remarkable talent. It's at age 16, here you are a junior in school. You're, you're already got your eyes focused on Notre Dame and possibly the Olympics. When you watch other great athletes perform, you're thinking to yourself, I can do this? Is that what you're thinking? I, yeah, pretty much. Um, before races, before anything, I'll be like, I can do this. <laughs> just, I just kind of get in the water and go. How many miles a day do you think you swim? Have you ever figured that out? Uh, probably anywhere between a like 8K to a 12K? Yeah, that's, I, I don't think, you know, when we watch uh, any great athlete uh, perform, it, I think people don't realize just how much training goes into what you do. I train about four hours a day, uh, what, like two hours, almost two hours, right before school. And I go to school for seven hours, and then 
I go back to the pool right after school. So another two hours. I'm I, constantly I, working. Yeah, I shared a little bit of that. I mean, I, I mentioned to you earlier uh, before we started the interview that I swam in high school and in college. And I remember those long, tough workouts, but I was nowhere near good enough to continue to do that. And, and I think that as you look forward to your future, you see maybe 12 gold me Olympic medals? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> that is, I'm trying to stay in reality. <laughs> okay. Um, you hope to go to Olympic trials, um, the trials meet to get the experience and everything. And I um, hope to see more deaf Olympic medals. I think you're so inspirational. I think it's fantastic what you're doing and congratulations on all your success. You won Sportswoman of the Year in 2022 from the International Committee of Sports for the Deaf. And I'm sure you'll win many, many more uh, awards and accolades. Uh, at some point, I'll be able to say, I interviewed Carly Cronk when she was still in high school and now she's a, a multi-champion, uh, a medal champion. And I'm so excited to be able to talk to you. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to your, your family, your parents. Uh, everybody who supported you and uh, you know I'm going to be rooting for Carly every step of the way. Thank you. Good luck Carly. Thank you.